Sophie Hardy and the Changeling Hybrid by M.R. Dale Narrated by Leona Hall Epilogue 1 Condonar is coming Suspended about two feet off the cold stone floor Jane was trying her hardest to shout Her hands were fastened tight behind her back But, try as she might to make some noise Nothing came out Days she had been there, but the only time she had interacted with anyone was when a dark hooded figure gave her some water. Her kidnapper hadn't revealed him or herself yet, but Jane had made out that there was another figure slumped in a chair next to her, not sure though if it was dead or alive. Jane had tried to contact him or her, but there was nothing. However, it was so dark that she thought she had done well to even make it out. There was no point in trying to zone out, her avatar was busy helping the girls take down changelings. She couldn't interrupt them. Her situation was bad, but theirs was worse. She had spent the last six weeks out following a trail that could potentially have led her to the thing she wanted the most, the thing that had been taken from her. But she had got herself captured by who knows what and had been unable to free herself. Without warning, the wooden door to the cell opened. In walked a silhouette, carrying something over its shoulder. Jane squinted hard but was blinded by a temporary light which now filled the room. The mystery individual walked closer and dropped the object on the floor. It was a body, a sleeping body. Quiet, the man said. It was the first time anyone had spoken to her in days, so Jane was glad that at least her ears still worked. She gave herself up. I don't know why. Not seeing the point in arguing and being weirdly glad of the company, Jane tried to nod and a tingling sensation returned to her mouth. I have full control over your implant, the voice said. You can't move unless I allow it. Jane mumbled, what? She wanted to ask how, if she was the real person. This person had managed to do that, but the constraints over her voice prevented her. Bending down, the man lifted the body and pushed it against the same wall that Jane was pinned to. Her eyesight started to return as it adjusted to the new light. Jane looked to her right and could make out the familiar hair and shirt. It was her avatar. What? was again all she could muster, before the tingling became painful. Some alterations I have made, the voice replied. Jane was now sure she knew who the voice belonged to. Why have you got us both here? Jane summoned from deep within her. Her throat started to return to normal. You're trying to find the agents. I can't allow it. Before you start, let me wake her up to see what she's doing here. The unmistakable tone of Alton King replied. I just want to see my husband, Jane retorted. Seeing him would involve releasing all of them, and that cannot happen, King replied, as he played about on a tablet. Jane continued to try to move, but the only thing that would was still just her mouth. There was a stir next to them as the avatar started to wake up. It squirmed against the wall and rolled its head. Clearly, King hadn't quite got the full body control he wanted just yet, but had succeeded in bringing the avatar round. It made a murmur, but neither of the two could work out what it was saying. King moved closer. What did it say? Jane asked. Shh! King snapped back, leaning right forward to listen in. Condonar is coming, said the avatar who five minutes ago was in Scope HQ on the radio guiding the girls and Kingsley through their ordeal. But upon hearing the warning that had sent shockwaves through the mythical community, she had taken it upon herself to return to her human form to warn those she thought could do something. As soon as it had finished its sentence, it passed out. Both Jane and King stared at each other in horror. Now that her eyes had adjusted fully, Jane could now make out that the figure slumped in the chair was Dale Nathan. He must have been knocked out for the last six weeks since King snatched him, Jane surmised. Wake him up, Jane ordered. No, King snapped back, trying to gather his thoughts. He was rattled, he couldn't think straight, and he didn't take too kindly to his subordinate trying to tell him what to do. If Condonar is coming, then you have to free us both. Only agents can stop her, and even then, they might not be enough. Don't free us, and there won't be a world to keep your company safe from. Jane was getting control of the situation. Still playing with his tablet, King scanned the news and found out what exactly had just happened on Earth. 
there were all sorts of news stories coming through about strange happenings and disappearances. The girls he had left in charge had clearly failed like he had always worried they would do. His company's reputation was now in jeopardy because of their inability to get the job done. King turned his back on the three prisoners and headed towards the door. Condonar is coming. The mythicals have returned and the children have failed. I need to step back in and take control before everything gets ruined. I will not lose that company, he said. Then he closed the door and Jane, her avatar and Dale Nathan were plunged once again into darkness. The Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by Emma Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels, or if you would like to purchase a copy of the book, then be sure to check out our website, www.sophiehardysaga.com. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy.